What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Mechanics Materials. So we got this problem here. So we are applying a 10 kip feet moment to this cross-sectional area here. And we want to find the max bending stress in the beam. And then we also want to find, we want to draw a three-dimensional view of the stress distribution acting over the cross-section. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, if we want to draw that three-dimensional view, we're going to need to figure out what the stress maximum is. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So the equation here is moment times y over moment of inertia. So of course, moment is given to us. y is going to be the distance, uh, basically from the acting point. So first of all, let's find out the center of mass of this shape. Pretty easy to tell. It's going to be right in the center. All right, it's going to cut in half the shape because it's symmetrical. We're going to label this y bar, and let's set that equal to, right, it's going to be 8 inches plus 1 inch. So it's going to be equal to 5 inches. So y bar is going to be 5 inches because that's the furthest away we can get from the center of mass, that's where the maximum bending stress is going to be found. So then all we have to do is find the moment of inertia. So let's solve for that. So moment of inertia, right, for a rectangle is 1 12th base height, not base again, base height to the third, right? Uh, so if we're using parallel axis theorem, there's usually going to be plus, you know, area distance squared. That being said, if we choose the right shapes, we can basically make it so it's not necessary for us to use distance squared, because everything already lies on the central axis. And how can we do that? Well, we can take this big rectangle, right, the one that's 8 in base and 10 in height, and we can subtract it from the moment of inertia of the inner rectangle, 6 and 8. So it's going to make this part not necessary. So let's go ahead and do that. So 112. The base of the big rectangle is 8 inches, and then the height of the big rectangle is 10 inches, so 10 to the third. Then we're going to, again, we're going to subtract that moment of inertia from the moment of inertia of the inner rectangle. And I factored out the 1 12th because it's going to be a both. So the base of the inner rectangle is 6, and the height of the inner rectangle is 8. So you're going to find that moment of inertia is equal to 410.67 inches to the fourth. Just like that. So then we can find max bending stress by just plugging it in. All right, so the equation max bending stress is equal to moment, 10 kip feet, so let's just keep it in kip, and then moment in y, and it's in feet, so we need to convert it to inches, because this is going to be in, uh, you know, KSI, or not KSI, yeah, it is going to be KSI, okay, so then y, like we said earlier, is 5 inches, and then i is 410.67, okay, so then this, right, max is equal to 1.46 KSI. And that's our answer. All right, so we solved basically the hard part of the problem. Now we just need to go ahead and draw it in three dimensions. So let me try to draw this. This is going to be a rough drawing, right? So our shape looks something like this. Here we go. And then we can kind of draw it in three dimensions, but maybe going out like this word. We kind of think is it going back in there like that. So let's use red to draw this. So what we know, right, max, if we look at the equation for bending stress, is this y gets bigger, the bending stress gets bigger. And if y is zero, then our bending stress is zero. So basically, if we're lying on our center of mass, which is five inches, we're going to have no bending stress. So let's go ahead and draw a line through here. This is representing zero bending stress. Then we know that our maximum bending stress occurs for this point. So it's going to be at the top and the bottom, which are five inches away from the center of mass, is where the max bending stress occurs. So we can maybe draw that out here like this and out here like this. So this bending stress is maximums here. And this is where it's equal to 1.46 KSI. Now we need to figure out which direction it is. Is it compressive or is it tension? So the moment is pointing upward. So if we draw the moment, which I will, it's going like this. So it's applying force to the top and pulling from the bottom. So we know that we're going to have tension on the top. So if we're drawing tension, we can kind of have the arrows going inward like this. And then if we're compressive on the bottom, the arrows are the bottom, the arrows are going to come outward. So then all we have to do is it's going to be a linear line, right? Because as y gets linearly bigger, it's going to express, it's going to get linearly bigger. So 
we can kind of just connect it like that and like that. And so it's kind of just a shape like this. Now we can draw on the sides that the arrows are kind of going inwards towards the shape there, and then it's coming outward down here as its intention. So yeah, that's kind of a very ugly looking drawing. You can even draw some more arrows in there if you want. All right, kind of going inward, but basically showing that it's linearly getting bigger. And so that's kind of what our drawing is going to look like. Not the best, but that's the idea once it wants you to go ahead and do. So thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to check out the next video where I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into this problem, solve the next one on the book. I also have a whole bunch of problems on chapter six. So if you're having trouble with bending stress or any other chapter in the book, I probably have a lot of problems on it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.